what is up guys welcome back to the channel this is a video you've all been asking me to do for you if you don't know already i am a real world airbus captain flying the a320 neo a321 and 319 in real life on my day-to-day -day job so a lot of you have been asking for me to get into microsoft flight simulator 2020 and take a look at the airbus a320 that we have in the sim now those that have been around my channel for a long time know I do a lot of streams and I haven't been able to stream recently, but we're going to get back on the stream train here very soon. So if you like seeing this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Feel free to join our Discord. We have some real world pilots in there as well that help you out with questions, anything sim related or real world aviation. But let's get to today's video. So we're going to take this airplane up and we're going to do a just kind of a quick, how does it fly? Is it realistic? Is it unrealistic? Is there any Airbus isms that we like to call them modeled in this aircraft and we're going to go ahead and find out for you right here all right so immediately when we hop in the cockpit here it's so beautiful everything about flight sim 2020 is absolutely beautiful we don't i don't have to tell you that twice or three times i'm going to try not to but sometimes something is just so awesome that you have to keep saying it but i'll hear it from me now this cockpit is probably the best cockpit that i've seen modeled in a flight simulator yet it is very nicely detailed uh, unfortunately there's a lot of switches that do not work and are inoperative we'll get to that in a later video but as far as just the the texturing and the lighting and how the lighting works and you get the reflections and the glow it's just it's really fantastic so i really like this cockpit it's absolutely stunning let's go ahead and get airborne and we're going to go ahead and take this airplane through some flight tests so Go ahead and release the parking brake. And we're going to get out of here. Now, I, I am missing some information on my PFD. I will get to that in a later video as well. This video is basically just the flight characteristics and the feel of this aircraft. So I'm not going to talk too much about the inside of the cockpit. Let's go ahead and give it a takeoff here. We're going to spool them up 50%, let the engine stabilize. Once the engines are stabilized, we're going to go ahead and go man toga all the way up. We got Mantoga SRS runway, auto thrust is blue. That symbolizes that the auto thrust is armed. And away we go. Taking off from my default test airport here, St. Martin. I use this airport for testing in every sim I've ever used. There's 100 knots, neutral pressure on the stick. V1, a rotate, up we go. A little sluggish to get off the ground there, positive rate, gear up. Let's go ahead and go flight directors on. Should have a flight director on for takeoff there. We'll go ahead in 276. We'll just fly straight out. Wow, very rapid acceleration. Flaps a zero. Airbus 320, you are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. All right, we can go ahead and frequency change. Acknowledge that. We're out of here. Juliana Tower, Airbus Alpha, I'm Sierra, X-Ray 320, frequency change. 247, that's close enough. Lever climb. Thrust climb, should have a little bit different enunciation there in the FMA, but we'll go ahead and, again, we're not going to go ahead and get into that today. There's 3,000, climbing 5,000. Thrust logic seems to be a tad off here, but let's just go ahead and fly the airplane. Uh, what's wanting me to nab, it should not be one to, we're just going to stick on this heading, I don't want to be nabbing anywhere, so let's go ahead and roll wings level, here's 4,000 for 5,000. Gosh, it looks pretty though. Alright, here we go, we are leveling at 5,000 feet, and right about 250 knots. So the first thing that we are going to test, I'm going to zoom in here on my PFD so you guys can really see what I'm talking about. The Airbus... There's a few protections and stabilities that are installed in aircraft in the aircraft fly-by-wire system. Some of the very basic fly-by-wire modeling in the Airbus pertains to its roll and bank angle. Now, the aircraft will prohibit you from banking past 66 degrees angle of bank. You can go ahead and see this here on my PFD. I've got 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees of bank, 45 degrees of bank, and then 66 should be somewhere right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll the airplane. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the flight directors off. I'm going to turn flight directors off, flight director one and two off. We should not have any vertical speed here. I don't know why that seems to do that. Can't quite clear that out. Um, but we'll go ahead and just leave that be at vertical speed zero. I would expect that to go away once I turned off the autopilot and the flight directors. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and see if we can get a roll in here past 66 degrees. There's 20, 30. 
And there it goes. It's limiting me right about 66 degrees. All right, let's go ahead and come out of that. We'll recover the aircraft, roll wings level first. And now we can add load factor on the aircraft to pull out of this dive. So that's good to see that it does have some basic limit there at 66 degrees angle of bank. All right, now we're back leveled at 4,000 feet here. The next thing we're going to test is the 33 degrees stability protection here of the A320. So the aircraft will roll to 33 degrees angle of bank, which is noted right here on their PFD. And if you let go of the side stick, the aircraft should maintain that bank angle, whether you go left or right. We went left last time, let's go to the right. There's 10, 20, 30 degrees angle bank. I'm going to let go of the side stick. I'm hands off and the aircraft is maintaining that bank angle. So that's good to see. We have basic fly-by-wire modeled there in the roll and bank. Now the next thing we're going to check here as I get back up to about 4,000 feet is we're going to check the return to 33 degrees angle of bank. So if I exceed 33 degrees angle of bank, let go of the side stick, it should automatically return the aircraft to 33 degrees angle of bank regardless of where I left the bank angle. So we'll go ahead and leave it here in a little bit of a climb. It doesn't have to be a straight level. So I'm gonna to come to the right. I'm gonna go about 40 degrees bank or so. I'm gonna let go of the side stick. All right, I'm gonna let go. All right, so it recovers to about 22, 25 degrees. So not not bad, at least they're, they're modeling something there. It's not 100% realistic. In the real aircraft, it will settle there right at that 33 degree mark. One thing I noticed here, I'm going to do it again, it seems to snap back a little aggressively. The real aircraft does not snap back that rapidly. Let's see, I'm going to leave it there about 40-ish and let go. So it, it does come back pretty quick. I think that's a little fast, but nevertheless, they have some basic fly-by-wire functions modeled there in regards to bank angles. So now we're going to test the aircraft's ability to maintain a set pitch attitude along the, the latitudinal axis of the aircraft. So we're going to be dealing with pitch. So I've got the airplane sit, sitting here right about, oh, three degrees nose up. If I disengage the auto thrust, so I'm going to bring the auto thrust back, we'll disengage that. And if I go ahead and bring the thrust to idle, this trim wheel should start moving back and we should be maintaining that pitch attitude, which you can see that the speed is coming back. Pitch attitude is holding right about three degrees. Excellent. Now, if I go full forward, Mantoga, it should maintain that as well. Here we go. There's the trim running, maintaining pitch attitude. Very nice to see. At least they have some basic trim. Well, so they have some basic fly-by-wire modeling complete there in bank and pitch. All right, so let's go ahead and test a high-speed protection. So what high-speed protection is, I'm gonna go ahead and set the aircraft up here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a climb to 4,000 feet. We'll go autopilot on, heading mode 250 knots. And we should go climb, there you go. Thrust climb, give me open climb. So in the real aircraft, if you are engaged with the autopilot and you accelerate past your never exceed speed, the airplane will actually disengage the autopilot and maintain a pitch up attitude so for not to overspeed the aircraft and damage the airplane. So let's go ahead and see if that happens here. We'll go thrust climb, open climb, up to 4,000 feet, there's Alt Star. I'm just gonna go ahead and disengage the auto thrust now and we're gonna let it speed up. So what should happen is the airplane should disengage the autopilot and we should see the airplane pitch up to prevent us from overspeeding and overstressing the aircraft. We should also, we're missing some symbology here on the speed tape. All right, here comes our never exceed speed, 360 knots. Overspeed, 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 overspeed. All right, so it does not appear to be modeled. That is also the incorrect overspeed warning. All right, let's go ahead and see if the opposite is true. So it will fail the overspeed protection test. Let's go ahead and test the low speed protection. So in order to accelerate my deceleration, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the speed brakes out. And so we don't get too far from the airport, I'm gonna make a quick 180 degree turn here. 
there we go right that's fine too so now if the airplane is engaged on the autopilot and it is in normal law which you can't even tell if the airplane's in normal law because we're missing quite a bit of symbology here on the pfd that's a little sad to see but it is a default airplane so we'll go ahead and just roll with it we're here to test the functions of the the core functions of the airbus i would like to see the airplane not stall and it should at the very least disengage the autopilot and maintain alpha prod so here we come here here vls is the single line v alpha prod is the tiger tail or the alternating yellow and black line and okay so it's actually it's actually engaging early there interesting all right so that's not not very correct either um, it's actually just go ahead and descending down, which is interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage the autopilot. Let me disengage it from the Q5500. We're going to go ahead and disengage the autopilot. I'm going to recover the aircraft. So we're going to fail the low speed protection, and we're going to fail the high speed protection as well. All right, so the last thing that we're going to test here is something called Alpha Floor. Alpha Floor is a low speed protection in the Airbus. Basically will prevent you from getting the airplane into a stalled state as a predictive function. And if it senses that your energy is getting too low, it will activate maximum thrust and prevent the airplane from stalling. It will reduce the AOA. So to go ahead and do that, I'm going to go ahead and bring the thrust levers to idle. And we're just going to configure the airplane uh, like we would for landing here. So I'm going to just go ahead and drop the gear early. I know we're a little bit early on that. We'll drop the landing gear. We're going to strive to maintain about 2,000 feet. If you next minus one flaps one, so we're going to just slow the airplane down. We're going to configure the aircraft. But if you next minus two flaps two. Flaps three, and let's pay attention here. Flaps full. And let's see what happens here. We're just gonna let the airplane decelerate in normal law. There we go, alpha floor is activated. You can see my thrust levers are coming up to toga thrust. Interesting that that left engine's rolling back. I don't know why that's happening. So we do have alpha floor activation. That is pretty cool. So we've put the aircraft through a series of tests. We found that it does actually have some basic fly-by-wire functions modeled, such as the bank and the pitch and attitude hold. But as far as overspeed protections, low speed protections and stabilities, which are technical terms for you real Airbus guys out there, I know just uh, kind of ro roll with it. I'm trying to keep this on simple terms. But there's a lot of things that aren't necessarily modeled in this airplane. and. I can understand that because this is a default aircraft, so I'm not trying to be super negative or super critical of Microsoft for this A320neo, but as far as it being a realistic airplane, I'm going to go ahead and have to say no, not at its current state. Now one thing that I will say is I think this airplane is in a position to where if you're familiar with the Zebo team and what they did with X-Plane 11 default 737. I think this airplane is in a position where it could really do well if somebody were to take it over and make it a study level aircraft or really put the time into editing 
because the modeling is absolutely fantastic. The lighting in the simulator is fantastic. There's a lot of things in this fan, in this sim that are absolutely fantastic. So as far as it being realistic, I'm going to go ahead and have to say no, it is not very realistic. Combine that with a lot of functionality that is not modeled in the cockpit, such as non-functional push buttons and chronos and passenger signs. There's a lot of things that are left to be desired in this airplane. With that being said, I do think that they have some basic core modeling in the, in the airplane there, um, but I would like to see it be improved or I'd love to see, you know, somebody take it over and actually turn this into a study level aircraft because I don't think it is deniable that this airplane is probably one of the most beautiful Airbus we've time. seen in any simulator. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing a couple more videos on the A320 and we're going to talk about some of the stuff on the inside of the cockpit and, and some other in-depth things that I've noticed about this aircraft. So if you enjoy this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. I hope you guys have enjoyed, I hope you guys are enjoying your simulators. And until next time, guys, I am V1. Stay safe, stay healthy. See ya.